for joining us for day one afternoon session of Manitoba Ag Days. We are thrilled to have you back here in these seats in person in Brandon, Manitoba. With respect to the treaties that were made on this land, we acknowledge that Manitoba Ag Days is held on Treaty 2 territory. The traditional land of the Dakota, Anishinaabe, Oji Cree, Cree, Dene, and the homeland. One of my very favorite parts of Manitoba Ag Days is presenting to you a couple of our future leaders uh, in agriculture and in this province. We have two young ladies who are part of the Manitoba 4-H program, um, and through their connections with 4-H, they competed in the Canadian Young Speakers for Agriculture competition in November of 2022. And due to their amazing capabilities, we invited them here this afternoon to be on stage with all of us back face-to-face -face for our Ag Days show. With that, I would like to invite Svena Bjornesson to come to the stage. Svena is 14 years old and a member of the Nipawa Area 4-H Beef Club. She represented Manitoba at the Canadian Young Speakers for Agriculture competition in November in the junior category. She loves working with and showing cattle and playing all sports. She has recently started her own purebred shorthorn herd and is looking forward to expanding. I am looking forward to hearing you speak, Svena.
According to the weather data collected by Kansas State University, the temperature averaged 104 degrees. This terribly hot weather lasted over a stretch of seven days with zero rainfall. The humidity was high and very little to no wind. Escaping this unbearable heat was unavoidable during the day or night as it never cooled down throughout the night. Over 2,000 head of cattle in the feedlot perished due to heat stress in this extreme heat wave. The loss of these cattle is a huge financial loss to owners, the feedlot, and to the food chain supply. Will grain farmers have to build enormous dikes to try and hold back the raging water spilling out of the river? November 2021, CTV News showed devastating pictures and videos of flash flooding that occurred in Abbotsford Valley, British Columbia. Thousands of domestic livestock died to the very quick rise of water that broke dikes and washed out roads. Hundreds of acres of prime farmland was submerged with raging waters. Agriculture affects climate through emissions of greenhouse gas, such as carbon dioxide, methane, and nitrous oxide. These emissions come directly from use of fossil fuels, tillage practices, fertilized agriculture soils, and livestock manure in large proportion. Farmers clearing their trees from land and draining every slough just to get every single acre into seed production isn't helping either. The wind can rip through miles of open land due to all the bushes being cleared up, ripping the top fertile soil along with it. Another example of global warming is this. My friend's grandmother was born and raised in Pangerton, Eastern Baphomet. She goes back to visit her family every few years and she cannot get over the weather changes. Mosquitoes and other bugs have made their way there, along with the different species of birds to eat them. Summer of 2021, they experienced the first heat wave of 25 degrees Celsius that lasted for days. None of them knew how to cook with it as normal temperatures are high teens. The locals are experiencing the ice formation on the ocean that is getting later and later in the year. This is making them harmless as they rely on seal hunting and fishing for food. The last great example of global warming that was on social media and national news occurred June 30th, 2021, Lytton, British Columbia. In a small community, people had to flee for their lives as record-breaking temperatures of 121 degrees Fahrenheit brought severe lightning storms with little to no precipitation and strong winds. This culmination fueled the smaller forest fires that were surrounding the town. In a matter of minutes, the town was destroyed by the enormous forest fire. As you can see, the rising global water and temperature is truly devastating for the agriculture sector. From heat waves, drought, and raging forest fires, to excessive rainfalls and hurricane lightning. No matter what farms we're producing, we all feel the effects of the weather right down to the consumer. Thank you very much, Spena. That was wonderful. Our second youth speaker this morning or this afternoon is Ray Lynn Kachowski, sharing her title, Mother Nature versus 18 Wheels and a Country that Needs to Do Better. Ray Lynn resides in the RM of Dauphin, attends grade 11 at the Dauphin Regional Comprehensive Secondary School, and is a member of the Spruce Creek 4-H Club. Ray Lynn also participated in the Canadian Young Agriculture Speakers Competition and in the senior category. Ray Lynn spends her time volunteering, working part-time, playing hockey, piano, soccer, curling, spending time with her dogs, and is a member of her school band and student council. I'm not sure what she does if she has any free time. So with that, Raylynn, we welcome you to the stage. Imagine walking into a grocery store and turning to tears because you have never seen so much food. This may sound unrealistic given the last two years of chaos in Canada. However, this was my experience with Talia who arrived from Ukraine over one year ago. She was in disbelief in the amount of food and variety of products available in Canada. While she stood there in disbelief and saw abundance, I saw empty shelves, apology signs for delayed shipping errors, and felt fear of a food shortage. 
Although we are in the same store, looking at the same shelves, our perspectives are very different. The truth is, however, Canada's current food supply chain issues are very real. Canadians need to be educated about supply chain issues and implement the new practices in order to adapt the changes we are experiencing. Food security and supply chain management practices need to be at the top of our leadership's list to do so, so we can have access to food in our own country. Good afternoon, fellow speakers, chairperson, audience members, dignitaries, and fellow guests. I am Raylan and will share some insights on the implications of the supply chain issues on Canada's food supply. If we have learned anything from the toilet paper crisis of 2020, Canada has a definite need to secure food and food inventory at all levels of the supply chain. From producers to truck drivers to retailers to consumers, all of us have a stake in ensuring Canadians have access to food. Yvonne Fraser, director of Arrow Food at the University of Guelph shared, because our food system is so tightly collaborated, any one issue can result in massive food shortages across the country. Our country has recently experienced farmland devastation occurring from wildfires, droughts, winter storms, and floods to major roadways being consumed by flood devastation, cutting off access to major parts of the country, as well as being consumed by flood devastation. Major shipping ports which left cargo ships backed up and waiting to unload for weeks. With the loss of the rail system and major shipping roads, communities were cut off from food sources and the economy took a major hit right in the gut, which woke up a country that may not have recognized the instability of its food chain. Land and livestock losses to producers, grain stores decimated, and producers' livelihoods challenged yet again. Mother Nature reminding us how overly dependent we are as consumers on our food supply chain. A pandemic nearly crippled our country by debilitating employees at grocery stores, it shut down factories, and prevented foreign farm workers in critical times in the growing seasons due to travel restrictions. Without labor on the ground, seeding was left delayed, unplanted, late harvest resulted in input, and harvest costs took a toll on producers due to the shortages they were experiencing in their labor force. Semi-drivers experienced border restrictions, not being able to transport food products due to vaccination policies in an industry that is already peaking in demand. Transportation issues have been one of Canada's biggest disruptions in the food supply chain. With numerous plant shutdowns, the cost of transporting products increased due to trucks not being able to back haul or carry full loads, which passed on to consumers. Consumers saw fewer options on the shelves, less availability of a product, quicker food spoilage in the fridge, and a hit on the pocketbook. Increases in fuel, fertilizers, and the ability to obtain seed affected our very own producers. These are only a few factors contributing to production and shipping delays, stockpiling behaviors, and rising costs. Canada is far too dependent on too few places in the world when it comes to having a secure food supply chain and a supply chain that can be disrupted in the blink of an eye, which had an impact on a country as developed as Canada. So, what do we do about it? Some may think growing our own food is the answer by going back to having backyard gardens and raising food products. Such a process is not always viable or a reality based on geography or lifestyle. We need to be able to grow and produce enough food in our own country. The shocking truth is that we do produce a great deal of food in our country already. So much goes to waste whether at the farm, at the table, in transport, or at the store. All along the food system, food is being wasted. Governments need to mandate reducing food waste in order to strengthen our food system. Dr. Kerry Holland from the Simpson Center of Agriculture and Food Innovation at the Public Education for School of Public Policy shares insight into all the food that is produced, manufactured, and prepared for human consumption, but that is never eaten and ends up in the landfills. It is appalling to hear statistics that 58% of our nation's food contributes to methane producing landfill sites. The answer is in the supply chain issues and food security is simply to produce more and waste less. The government is buying up perfectly fertile, well-maintained, productive land only 
hoping to pour concrete over it for the next skyscrapers while having food hauled into the country. We should be increasing our yields in Canada, not selling off valuable farmland. We need to change society's thinking on food in general. We do not need to buy the perfect food. We need to change the concept of aesthetics and grading and pay farmers for all grades over production in their contracts. Paying the frontline grocery store workers and workers in the field a viable wage to ensure the workers in the field and at the till are doing valuable work. Most families do not realize they're wasting anywhere from $1,100 to $3,500 of food products a year, as noted by Dr. Carrie Holland. You probably have prematurely thrown out a box of pasta, all because how you've been programmed to think about best before dates, which are not even required, but more of a marketing strategy. I have only begun to give you some food for thought, pardon the pun. A pandemic exposed how fragile our food system is in Canada. This was reiterated by Mother Nature washing out major transport routes. Food security it is a real issue. Educate yourself, others, hold leaders accountable to making changes, and make changes in your thinking. Thank you for allowing me to share my views on the impact of the supply chain issues on Canada's food supply. Thank you very much, Raylan, and I'll invite Selena back up, please. I think we can all agree that these ladies did an uh, extremely well um, prepared speech and kept their cool in light of maybe a more nerve wracking situation than usual. So, very well done. It's our great privilege here at Manitoba Ag Days to have in our attendance the Lieutenant Governor of Manitoba, the Honorable Anita Neville. I would invite her honor to join us here at the podium. Thank you very much. And let me begin by congratulating the two young presenters. Uh, your presentations were thoughtful and well researched and certainly give us all something to think about. So thank you very much for what you've done here today. Friends of Ag Days, it's truly a pleasure to join you at this learning event and community celebration as this time as we return to life in person for a change. I'm honored to meet with you here on Treaty 2 land in the beautiful Westman region, home of the Anishinaabe, the Dakota, Red River Métis people, here and throughout Manitoba. We are working to, to advance understanding, healing and reconciliation and truly build a better home for all. As our province, along with the rest of the world, works to heal from the disruptions of the last few years, it's appropriate that this year's Ag Day theme is farmers' health, safety, and wellness. Since the first men and women learned to plant seeds and domesticate animals thousands of years ago, society has truly depended on the work of those who tend crops and tend livestock. As technological change from the first steam threshers to tractors that communicate with satellites has increased productivity in agriculture, we have all come to depend on our most basic of human needs on fewer and fewer people. The disruptions of the last few years have shown us that even as everything else was turned upside down, we could count on one thing, the farmers there was always food. But the hard work, long hours, dependence on weather and uncertainty, uncertainty over prices and expenses, take a toll. So this year's focus on health and wellness is fitting and timely. 
It's nice to see that with all the science, technology, and agricultural economics on your agenda, you've also left some time for laughter. No doubt one of the things that help health and wellness is simply having the chance to mix and mingle with old and new friends at events like this. And I must say I was dazzled when I saw the number of cars here and the number of people who come to Ag Days. As always, you've seen a lot of amazing technology and fascinating equipment at this show. But the most important tools in our most vital industry remain the innovative, problem-solving brains and the strong, resilient hearts of the men and women of Manitoba's agricultural community. I hope you enjoy Ag Days, and may 2023 bring you a bumper crop, crop of pride and joy and deep satisfaction in a job well done. Thank you very much for having me here today. Thank you very much, Your Honor. Next up on our agenda is someone who needs a little introduction here. We invite the Honorable Heather Stephenson, Premier of Manitoba. and it's just such an honor to be back here uh, once again at, at Ag Days. It's been a few years since we've been here in person, but it's so great to be back and always great uh, to be in, in Brandon and back in Brandon. I uh, just want to thank uh, Savannah and Raylan. Those, those were fantastic presentations. Uh, just, you know, obviously they've learned a lot about what some of the impacts are on our farming industry and how important it is to be on top of those. So congratulations to those two excellent presentations today. Let's give them another round of applause. Your Honor, great to be back here uh, with you again, and uh, my colleague Derek Johnson, Minister of, uh, of Agriculture, as well as uh, other dignitaries who are here with us today. I have many of my colleagues who are here with us today. I'd like them please to stand. We have a great showing for Ag Days in Manitoba, and I guess it was so great to have all of them here with us today. Farmers are the backbone of our province. You work tirelessly every day, often in very difficult conditions, to help feed the world. On behalf of our entire Progressive Conservative team, I want to thank you for everything that you do. In 2021, you generated a record cash receipts of $8.5 billion, with nearly half that value coming from exports to countries in every corner of the globe. Since 2016, the value of food processing has increased by 40%, and we have seen over $2 billion invested in the sector. The pork industry has expanded rapidly with the expansion of the High Life plant in Nipawa and Maple Leaf Foods in Winnipeg and right here in Brandon. The plant protein sector has taken off with $750 million invested in Roquette, and Merit Functional Foods plants in Portage La Prairie and in Winnipeg. And Simplant has doubled the potato processing, while Patterson Global Foods has committed to make Manitoba home to the largest oat processing plant in the country. Looking around this room today, I see incredible dynamism, and innovation, and hope for this great province of ours for our future. Egg Days is back and it is stronger now than ever before. As we begin a new year, I want you to know that our government is fighting each and every day for you. We have a real plan for Manitoba, a plan that will make our province more affordable with tax relief for farmers and homeowners, a plan that will make our province safer, cracking down on violent offenders in our communities and a plan that will help make Manitoba more prosperous than ever before, creating good jobs and economic growth that will last for generations to come. Our farmers and agriculture processors are a huge part of that vision for Manitoba. We know how much it costs to run a family farm, 
and as inflation drives up our prices, we know that every, every single dollar counts. We are listening and we are responding with significant reductions in education property tax on farm properties. We are continuing to make life more affordable for Manitobans. We put $79 million back in the pockets of farmers through reductions in the education property tax. There is more to come this year, with rebates going up to 50% and saving farmers another $55 million in 2023. <laughs> and in future years, our government will eliminate uh, this tax for good. We also know that rural crime has been a problem for too long, hurting family farms across our province. We are addressing the root causes of crime in Manitoba and investing in initiatives to crack down on serious and violent offenders. Late last year, we joined police chiefs and officers from across the province, including right here in Brandon, to announce new initiatives that target serious and violent offenders. We established a new Integrated Violent Offender Apprehension Unit. We created a new program to target offenders on bail, and we strengthened the Criminal Organization High Risk Offender Unit to better monitor violent offenders on probation. We also know that punishing law-abiding gun owners does nothing to stop crime in our communities. We are, we are pushing back on the federal government's misguided bill of C-21 and focusing our resources on stopping real gun violence in our communities. I joined premiers from across the country this past week to ask for bail reform that will put a stop to the revolving door that lets violent offenders continue to victimize our communities. We will always stand up for hunters, for farmers, and other law-abiding gun owners, and we will always work to crack, to crack down on violent offenders. Our government is also investing in programs that will reduce addictions and homelessness that contribute to crime. Over the last year, we have invested in homeless shelters, including right here in Brandon, rapid access to addiction medicine clinics, and announced up to 1,000 new treatment spaces for Manitobans entering recovery. We are providing the hope and the compassion that Manitobans need to get on a better path in life in their lives. Finally, we are creating jobs and growing our economy. Investments in highway infrastructure through Manitoba Trade and Commerce Grid and investments in Centerport South and the Churchill Rail Line will make Manitoba into a true multimodal trade and transportation corridor. And we are establishing new partnerships with post-secondary institutions and industry leaders to address labor shortages. We know there is a real need in our agriculture sector where projections show one in five jobs could go unfulfilled uh, by 2029. Right here in Brandon, Assiniboine Community College is offering a solution. Their proposed Prairie Innovation Center for Sustainable Agriculture will provide innovative and collaborative programming with graduates entering new jobs in our farms and food processing plants. Thanks to the college's leadership under President Mark Frisson, they have secured more than $16.5 million from private sector donors for this very exciting project. And today, I am happy to announce that our government is doing our part by investing up to $10 million to make the Prairie Innovation Center a reality. This is going to be huge for the future of our province and today and 
certainly we will get the job done for the future of agriculture here in Manitoba. So thank you once again to all of our local farmers, to industry leaders who are here with us today from right around Manitoba and from around the world. Our government will continue to stand with you now and into the future. There's so many exciting days ahead. Welcome back. Happy Egg Days, everyone. It's great to be back here in Brandon. Thanks and enjoy the day. I'd like to invite the Honorable Derek Johnson, Minister of Agriculture for Manitoba, to share a few comments. Well, thank you very much, and it's uh, so nice to see so many pe here, people here after our hiatus. It's uh, nice to see you face to face and actually be able to see your face. So uh, thanks for thanks for showing up, and it's. My privilege to bring greetings on behalf of uh, uh, Manitoba's Department of Ag Agriculture. I want to thank my colleagues uh, for being here who uh, we've recognized. I also want to recognize the critic of agriculture, Diljeet Brar. He's uh, here on behalf of the NDP. So I want to thank Premier Stephenson for her commitment to the agriculture and and uh, food industries and their important role in the Manitoba economy. My congratulations to the 46th annual Manitoba Egg Days and I'm glad to see uh, the return here to the Keystone Center. There's so much innovation happening, it's great to see firsthand and I'm sure everybody will take in all the boosts if you're as much of a, a technology nerd as myself. I'm climbing in the tractors, I'm like I'm two years old again. So. Uh, Make sure you take that all in and enjoy it before you go. And I also hear there's some volunteers that have been on the Egg Days board, or back when it used to be even uh, Weed Days, uh, for 44 years. So I just want to say thank you to all the organizers who put this together, and I think they deserve a round of applause for our appreciation. So today, this year's Eggs Day, Egg Day's theme is Farmer, Health, Safety, and Wellness. And with a focus to work smart, take care, and feed the world. And it's uh, a great inspiration to us all. Over the last several years, many of you navigated significant challenges, including the pandemic, high input costs, and disruptions to supply chains, followed by a drought in 2021, and we all remember the excess moisture just recently here in the spring of 2022. So I grew up on a farm in the Interlake area, and uh, I know there's been some tough times uh, these last couple of years and uh, stressful times for you and your family and your neighbors. Um, I remember the days when there was interest rates were over 20% and the stressful conversations around the, uh, the dining table so I just encourage anybody, um, it's important to take care of your, your, uh, yourself, your family, and your um, mental health as well. So please, please reach out. We have lots of uh, helplines and stress lines um, that, that are more than eager to help you. So there's some good news in 2022. Um, fall prices were strong and the outlook for the year ahead is, is uh, very hopeful. Pay prices moderated and, and, and producers are taking advantage of the increased pay supply to rebuild their feed inventories and, and hopefully they have some carry over this, uh, this spring. The commodity prices can stay ahead of uh, fertilizer and fuel costs. There is opportunity for crop producers as well. So there's, uh, there's, there's good, good news on the horizon hopefully. Other good news includes the continued investment in agriculture and food industries, despite all of these challenges. We have uh, been seeing strong investments in livestock and poultry production, in animal and plant protein processing, and in infrastructure to support the industry, your industry. These investments are creating opportunities for farmers, and let me just speak to a few examples that I have here. So new dairy processing in Winnipeg is uh, driving increased milk production and herd investment and the potential for even more volume needed going forward. Our growers are seeing new market opportunities with the expansion of oat processing capacity here in Manitoba. 
Growers are seeing opportunities to diversify their crops. Uh, they, they grow through protein extraction from peas, fava beans, and other crops, driven by plant protein processing. Pork producers are also adding production to new opportunities through the expansions of uh, pork processing that have occurred in Nipawa, Winnipeg, and uh, also Winkler. More cattle are being processed, which provides opportunities in Manitoba for beef and dairy processors. And we are also seeing investment in grain handling around the province. Much of that investment has achieved, has been achieved under Manitoba's protein advantage strategy. North America's first and only protein strategy that integrates both plant and animal protein. In fact, since 2019, our Manitoba Protein Advantage strategy attracted $823 million in new investments and has created 912 jobs to date. The strategy will benefit our producers and processors around the province through innovation and value chain collaboration. The strategy is drawing investment interest and as uh, experienced on a re recent trade mission to Mexico. As many of you know, Mexico is a particularly important market for Manitoba's agriculture and agri-food sectors and industries. It was inspiring to meet with North American buyers of our products and the trade mission reinforced our province's potential for agriculture investment. The fact that we saw growth during some of the toughest challenges the sector has experienced in recent times says a lot about who you are and about our agriculture industry's determination. Most of all, our investment growth speaks to the resilience of the sector and of all of our producers. A thriving and sustainable agriculture sector is important to Manitoba's economic growth and prosperity. For more than 60 years, the Agri-Insurance Program delivered by Manitoba Agriculture Services Corporation, or as we all know it, MASC, has been available to help Manitoba's farmers manage their production risks. I know that producers are always interested to know what the Agri-Insurance Program will be and will provide the terms of coverage as they uh, plan for upcoming cropping seasons. I'm pleased to announce Agri-Insurance coverage is expected to exceed previous years and reach an all-time high of $5.3 billion on 9.45 million acres in Manitoba this year. We're increasing our support for producers through the Agri-Insurance program because we know that adequate coverage is now, more than ever, important in helping manage the costs and risks related to farming as they continue to climb. The back-to-back -back years of increased coverage is a reflection of continued strength in commodity prices going into the 2023 crop year. To ensure premium rates remain affordable, MASC updated their premium rate methodology to limit the year-over-year -year premium rate increase to a maximum of 10%. This helps to reduce the impact of significant losses, loss years like 2021. In addition, MASC has expanded the contract price option. This program allows producers to blend the price from their contracted production with the base agri-insurance dollar value to create an individualized insurable value. Originally, CPO was available for canola and field peaks. For the 2023 going season, CPO will now be available for most crops, except for potatoes, vegetables, and forages. The expansion of this program gives producers an opportunity to tailor their insurance coverage to better reflect their expanded return from the market. Now, I'm sorry for my colleagues from the city, I can see some of their eyes glazing over, but this is riveting stuff for rural Manitoba.
The spring of uh, 2022 was challenging for many producers with excess moisture preventing about 860,000 acres from being seeded. Excess moisture insurance is a feature included in agri-insurance, paid out over 50 million in indemnities. To help producers plan for their next growing season, I was pleased to announce in October that MASC increased the dollar value of EMI coverage available for 2023 to $75 for the basic coverage from the previous 50. Higher covers options, of course, are available at $100 and $125 per acre as well. These tools, along with other coverage offered through agri-insurance, provide producers in both the grain and livestock sectors with protection against crop, production shortfalls, and quality losses when adverse weather hits. Another way we are supporting our farmers through this is a ter temporary uh, rent reduction for forage leases on agriculture crown land. This will help keep up to $4 million in the pockets of ranchers to ensure them, uh, to help support them in coming through some tough times. The rent reduction for 2022 rate takes place over the next three years. So the first year, it'll be a 50% reduction. 2023, it'll be a 33% reduction and 2024 will be a 15% reduction. We will also be moving forward with the Agriculture Crown Lands leasing auction on the week of February 6th. The parcel listing is available on our website or contact any Manitoba Agriculture or MASC Service Centre. I am also proud of our government's recent announcements that will help increase veterinary services to the livestock and poultry industries. Our government is funding five new seats at the Western College of Veterinary Medicine starting this year. This will bring the total seats up to 20 from, uh, for Manitoba study, uh, students to uh, study veterinary medicine. These five... <laughs> and these five new seats will all be targeted towards large animal and or rural mixed animal practices through the special administ administration process when they get uh, when they apply. Um, this put our this now puts our investment to a total of 8.4 million dollars annually uh, for bringing vet veterinarians back to Manitoba or educating them. And when they grow up with grassroots in Manitoba, they'll come back and serve uh, serve us here. Fingers crossed. So I want to switch the topic for a moment that's uh, always on the mind of farmers and consumers, and that's sustainability. Egg crown lands are an important environmental asset for all Manitobans uh, for so many reasons. So are the lands held privately by farmers. Your stewardship to, of your land is vital to your farm operation and the trust that uh, 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 purchasers have in your products. I think there's people that have traveled around the world in this room and uh, you might be in some countries that you're not necessarily um, comfortable picking items up off the shelf and feeding to your kids and grandkids. We have that trust here in Manitoba and Canada and uh, it's all because of you and the great work you guys do. As a province, we've been a uh, partner with you in protecting this valuable resource and continuing to enhance tools to help you do so. Of those tools is the Environmental Farm Plan, or the EFP. Since 2020, Canada and Manitoba have invested $990,000 in Keystone Ag producers to develop the online EFP platform, which we launched in October. Manitoba Agriculture has worked alongside CAP in developing this exciting new electronic platform for farmers. The EFP is a voluntary, confidential self-assessment for producers, farm, or ranch. It allows farm managers to identify agri environmental assets and to address risks to improve on-farm sustainability and to meet industry contract requirements. The new online platform makes the process of creating an environmental farm plan easier, more flexible, 
and ever so convenient. By implementing an environmental farm plan, producers are able to improve air, water, and soil quality, as well as help to make Manitoba-grown commodities more marketable to environmentally conscious consumers. Sustainability does not just mean environmental sustainability, but financial sustainability as well, which boils down to on-farm profitability. There's a wise producer that once told me, it's hard to be green if you're operating in the red. <laughs> the high cost of fertilizer, the need to reduce greenhouse gas emissions, and the need to make every dollar work smartly for you really speaks to the value of the 4R approach to managing nutrients. Farmers recognize the, res the responsible use and application of nutrients within their operations. They're always thinking ahead and uh, in fact the Manitoba agriculture industry was first in Canada to enter into an agreement on the 4R nutrient management. We're pleased to invite the Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister of Agriculture and Agri-Food, Francis Druin, to the podium. Thank you so much, uh, Stephanie, and hello everyone. On behalf of the Honourable Marie-Claude Bibeau, Canada's Minister of Agriculture and Agri-Food, it's great to be here at Manitoba Ag Days with you as you gather in person for the first time since the last two years. And I do want to acknowledge and thank the two young speakers who actually talked about real issues that um, Canada's agricultural ministers are facing. And I know they're probably uh, agricultural ministers in the making. So congratulations again on, uh, on uh, winning that contest. I think we may have... Um, I want to congratulate the Manitoba Ag Days for putting on a world-class show here in Brandon and I can confirm the show is older than me. <laughs> Your focus uh, on mental health this year is right on the mark. We need to make sure that farm families have the resources they need to stay safe, strong, and healthy. It's been a very stressful time for producers here in the province with a severe drought followed by historic flooding and not to mention all the challenges of the pandemic from high input costs to supply chain disruptions to labor shortages. We are partnering with the province to help Manitoba farmers weather these challenges and keep their businesses strong. In 2021, Minister Bibo worked closely with the province to get agri-recovery dollars out as quickly as possible to help farmers facing financial losses due to the drought. The federal government is also proud to partner with the province and producers in support of agri-insurance. As Minister Johnson just said, producers can expect higher coverage this year for most crops in Manitoba, along with improvements to make the program more flexible for producers while keeping premium rates in line. The recent weather extremes here in Manitoba are a stark reminder that farmers are on the front lines of climate change. We continue to invest to help farmers build their resilience while supporting their livelihoods. For example, here in Manitoba, our On-Farm Climate Action Fund, led by the Manitoba Association of Watersheds, is helping farmers defray the costs of fertilizer equipment modifications, cover crop seed, and fencing for rotational grazing. Yes, we can help farmers today, but we must also ensure that we look at a long-term view. And that is why Minister Bibo launched a national consultations last month on Canada's first sustainable agricultural strategy. That is a strategy designed by farmers and for farmers. This strategy is a shared vision for Canada to maintain its position on a world leader in sustainable agriculture while helping farmers earn a good living from their production. I invite Manitoba farmers to join the important conversation. And looking ahead, the prospects are bright for agriculture in this province. Your sector is coming off a strong season, and you're incredibly innovative and productive. Just look around us here at Ag Days. I know that Manitoba has ambitious plans to be a global leader in sustainable protein, and we want to help you get there. We're opening Canada's first agricultural trade office in the Indo-Pacific, which is a strong and growing market for Manitoba plants and animal proteins. 
We're also supporting the Great Work Protein Industry Canada and Merit Functional Foods in Winnipeg to help Manitoba producers tap into protein market into new protein markets with their crops. And to secure a strong future for Canada's agri-food sector, Minister Bibeau and Johnson and their colleagues are moving forward on a new sustainable Canadian agricultural partnership. Over the next five years, SCAP will deliver $3.5 billion to the sector. That includes a 25% increase in federal, provincial, territorial investments. And that will help us better meet the priorities of your industry here in Manitoba, from trade to innovation to sustainability, and to risk management. Minister Bibo and our government look forward to working with you to support a sustainable sector here in Manitoba, environmentally, socially, and economically. On behalf of the Minister, I wish you and all a great visit to the show, a prosperous season in 2023. It's our privilege to have with us today um, Minister David Bodin, Minister of Agriculture and Associate Minister of Education, for the Manitoba Métis Federation. So thank you very much, and you have a few comments to make. Thank you. Uh, I only have about uh, 25 minutes here to deliver, so uh, you'll have to bear with me. It actually comes about five minutes. Uh, as customary with the Métis government, uh, I need to um, acknowledge the elders and the seniors that are in the room and say thank you for being present here today. Um, of course, uh, I have to take these readers off because I don't need them, because the words are small. Uh, hello, thank you. Uh, my name is David Bodin, and thank you for welcoming me here today and to the organizers of this event, and for welcoming the staff representatives of the Mountain Major Federation uh, who could not be in attendance. So I bring greetings on behalf of President Chartrand of the entire Red River Métis government and also the MMF Southwest Region Executive of Vice President Leila LaPlante and Regional Directors Minister John Fleury and Minister Will Gadon, as well as uh, Minister Joanne Remillard who's our Environment and Climate Change Minister and they, they give their regrets they couldn't be here. I'm honored to join all of the dignitaries on the stage today the Lieutenant Governor, the Premier, Minister of Agriculture and my other dignitary colleagues. Um, I want to take this opportunity as Minister of Agriculture. I want to say that I represent the agricultural portfolio interests on behalf of over 125,000 Red River Métis citizens, including thousands of citizens actively engaged directly within the agricultural sector. As the MMF Minister of Agriculture, I'm committed to tackling, tackling the agricultural issues confronting our Red River Métis citizens. Our Métis Farmers and ranchers have played an important role in shaping Manitoba's agricultural sector since before the province's entry into Confederation. Farming and ranching represent both a modern livelihood and a traditional economic foundation of the Red River Métis. Despite the extreme droughts, floods, and the increasing damaging effects of climate change, the MMF is determined to grow its capacity as a government conduct Métis-led research and innovation, secure and utilize agricultural lands, and provide financial and technical supports for our producers. Traditional foods remain an integral part of the Métis culture to this day. However, access to traditional and nutritious foods are difficult for many citizens to obtain due to their location, financial, or physical limitations. Many of our programs are being developed around addressing this common challenge in mind. In 2022, a total of 3,000 pounds of bison meat was purchased from seven different Red River Métis-owned bison ranches and was distributed to citizens across all of our seven MMF regions. The MMF has also provided many thousands of hampers filled with foods and essentials to citizens in need throughout the pandemic. Beginning in 2021, the MMF proudly took on the responsibility of managing the Real House Vegetable Garden located in Winnipeg at the Real House National Historic Site in trust with Parks Canada. In 2022, over 40 heritage varieties of vegetables, fruits, and herbs were grown, and 1,000 pounds of food was distributed to citizens in need. To build upon this success, the MMS Food Security Initiative recently launched in late 2022 and has been created to help tackle food insecurity, a direct impact of climate change, by establishing a network of seven 
year-round food production greenhouses, community gardens, edible forests, and pollinator gardens across the National Homeland that the Red River maintain. The initiative will produce a variety of traditional fruit, vegetables, and herbs offering fresh and nutritious produce to Red River Métis citizens at an affordable price. It will also reintroduce traditional garden practices, knowledge, and education to Red River Métis citizens of all ages with a strong focus on youth. Each project will create community inclusion and involvement, opportunity for community events, and foster intergenerational learning. The initiative will focus on instilling resiliency and sustainability. The first of the seven greenhouses are expected to begin construction in spring of 2023, and the following six greenhouses to follow later in 2023 and 2024. The MMF is actively seeking to enter strategic partnerships to further the interests of the Red River Métis farmers, ranchers, and agribusiness entrepreneurs. The MMF understands the importance of education as the driving force of agriculture. The MMF agriculture portfolio is now strongly positioned to pursue long-lasting partnerships and build a strong understanding together with educational institutions. In addition to educational institutions, the MMF will continue to pursue the development of strong partnerships with agribusiness, municipal, provincial, and federal governments, as well as looking to beyond borders by approaching international opportunities, including educational investment and trade opportunities. Providing training and educational opportunities to establish in young producers and specifically Métis youth is the key to developing the next generation of leaders in agriculture. Over the past two years, the MMS agricultural portfolio has been revitalized and has grown leaps and bounds. To date, these projects are only the beginning of several even larger developments within the portfolio. And I encourage every single Red River Métis citizen within the agricultural sector to get in contact with us to be notified of programs and anticipated funding, and of course, to work together to strengthen the portfolio. The future success of the Red River Métis agriculture depends on building relationships with all governments and stakeholders by knocking down barriers and building on bravering commitments with a shared goal of supporting all Red River Métis citizens. With that, I say thank you. Merci. Merci. Yes, thank you very much. Uh, I don't have any of this sort of ag talk to give you, uh, unfortunately. I, I come from an ag family, and uh, when I was young, I asked my dad, should I go into farming? And he was a, was a farmer, and he was very honest. He said, you know, son, it would help if you were smarter. <laughs> so, uh, hey, you know me. <laughs> so I ended up in politics. <laughs> uh, well, there is smart people in politics, just, just so you know. I wasn't looking up there, but I was not here. Yeah. And, and, and I did have to note, I was waiting for Lynn Esteson, but I thought I saw him leave the room, but I feel like he's still watching. That is a good sign. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, it is so awesome to have this uh, back on after a few years' absence. This is a major event for the city of Brandon. Uh, and, and, and good things are coming from this. I, I swore, uh, I, I saw Mark Fries on ACC President start floating away at one point there uh, with the announcement, which is huge for the city of Brandon and for our whole region for ACC. That's a great, great thing. Um, you know what, I also see my old friend, uh, I want to acknowledge up there, uh, and former youth uh, farmer, Larry McGuire, Manitoba Youth Farmer of the Year. Larry, that's, uh, that's got to be a good 20 years back, for sure. <laughs> but he's always out here. And, uh, you know, for the ACC, for all of this, it is regional. Like, Brandon is our regional hub. We want to keep growing our agricultural around here. If anybody around here, if I can do a little pitch for Brandon, if anybody around here knows any of these big pea plant guys or any of those other people that are doing things, bring them to Brandon. We're open to talk about all those kind of things. We want to grow our industry. We've got our airport. We've got everything here, the highway. <laughs> Bottom line, Ed Days, their board, the volunteers, everybody that comes here. I want you to buy things. I want you to sell things. I want you to have a great time when you're in Brandon. So thank you to all the dignitaries that come. Thank you to all the people that come here. And we're grateful that you're here. Enjoy your time in Brandon. Thank you very much.